afternoon. Hi. I'm glad to see you. This is Friday, April 30th, and just wanted to give an update uh, from a very busy couple of weeks at the state capitol. You might see uh, my puppy dog moving around in the background. Um, she really likes it on Friday when I'm home from the capitol, so glad to have her here. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to hit on. I want to talk a little bit about some of the legislation we saw this week. I want to talk about redistricting and then a um, couple other little things. So first of all, just to say we're in the part of the session. It's kind of a hectic time where um, bills are coming back from the House. So any of the Senate bills that went over to the House and got amended have to come back to us for approval. The author of the bill decides if they want to accept those House amendments. If so, it comes to the Senate for us to accept them formally. Um, if they don't want to accept those amendments, then they go to what's called a conference committee, which committee is kind of a misnomer because it's actually just a piece of paper that gets signed by a certain uh, majority of a committee and then it can come to the floor. Um, but they can actually rewrite legislation at this point in the session. And that's some of the most challenging things to keep up on is what bills are in conference and if there's some kind of major change. Trying to make sure we know about it so that we can um, analyze it well before it comes to the floor. So that's where we are in session. The other big thing right now is the budget. Um, so certainly budget negotiations are going strong between the House and the Senate. Um, I do want to mention that Monday evening, Senator Kerry Hicks and I are going to be doing a town hall. It's a just telephone town hall specifically about the budget and about our outlook on economic recovery in our state. We'd like to hear from you. Um, what you're seeing in terms of your challenges. We're still helping a lot of folks in our office with unemployment and other challenges related to the economic fallout from the pandemic. And so we'd be interested to hear from you. We also want to talk about priorities for the state budget and what we hope can happen in the upcoming week. So that's Monday evening at 6 p.m. Um, I'll post a link below for you to know where to go for that um, town hall Monday evening. Um, I do want to mention just one thing is that we passed the um, Senate legislative proposed maps out of the select committee on redistricting this week. That's a process, you know, that's been going on for quite a while. Our state has decided to move forward with drawing legislative maps using last year's estimated census data. And then we will update them this fall if they're, they're far off. Um, the staff has worked really hard to try to make those districts fair and even. Um, so they're really comparable in terms of population. Some of our um, smaller communities, our rural towns have lost a lot of individuals. Oklahoma County has grown. Oklahoma Metro has grown by 150,000 plus. Um, so our statewide growth was about 5.5%, um, but you'll see that Oklahoma City area has grown by something like 12%. I'll get that number down eventually. Um, so clearly they had to redraw the maps to make sure each person's vote counts the same. And that's what it's based on. Um, I'm glad to talk about any specifics with you. There's a lot of great information on the Senate website that shows you what those new maps will look like. For me, that means Senate District 30 is going to be more than 50 percent new people. So about 53 percent new people. And for any of you who are currently in my district um, who are being carved out, just know I still represent you officially through November of 2022 and will be continuing to serve you in the Senate, even if you don't live in my area later. Um, those maps go into place officially with the election in November of 2022. It is a lot of change. Um, I'm really grateful that my neighboring senators are fabulous too. So um, a lot of people who won't have me as their senator anymore will have some of my colleagues who I think will will also represent them very well. And I'm looking forward to meeting the new people. You know, I spent so much time uh, meeting my constituents I have now. I can't wait to meet the new folks. So that'll be taking place. Um, it should be coming to the Senate floor this week. So if you're interested in the redistricting and maps, let me know if you have specific questions. Otherwise, you know, I think I mostly will be um, talking about what's happening in my district, unless anyone wants to ask me more about the process, et cetera. Um, the other thing, I want to talk a little bit about bills. Um, with the volume of bills that come through in the last couple of weeks, it's, it's pretty hard to decide what to comment on. And I really feel, you know, like I can't comment on everything, frankly, that comes through. But I do want to talk just about a couple of bills. One bill that's just been kind of eating at me over the last couple of weeks. And, and now I don't have this, the number in front of me, but I will find it before we're done. Um, this year's been really tough for uh, criminal justice reform. I feel like we've had some setbacks in terms of um, the real commitment to making our state a more um, 
oriented more towards how we can alleviate um, challenges for victims and at the same time uh, make sure we're not sending offenders away um, unnecessarily and ruining families. Um, and I think that I think we've seen some challenges this year with that. Um, we've done some things that I think are not going to help um, reduce our our crime in our state. And um, you know, a lot of the data has shown us that increasing incarceration does not um, reduce crime in our state. So I think what we have to look at is rather than just looking at, you know, what we think is right and kind of those anecdotal stories of people that we know, we know there's victims and people who've been harmed um, through crimes, but how do we help the offender if they're convicted? How do we help them not continue um, taking those actions that might be counter to our communities? And, and we have to make sure that our criminal code is helping with that. Um, and I'm not confident that a lot of the decisions we made this year have done so. And um, so the bill specifically, I was thinking, about is uh, the one I'm really thinking about is there was a bill that we passed that will allow a district attorney to propose an option to basically banish someone from a judicial district. So if they chose to, the DA could um, choose to send someone out of a district um, as one of the sentencing requirements. So that would mean like, let's say someone was in Oklahoma County, they might have to move out of the county. Um, and I'm deeply concerned about how that's going to impact people's support systems, their connection to their community, and whether that's going to solve any problems or if it's just going to move them to new communities. Um, so this is Senate bill, excuse me, House Bill 1095. Um, and it specifically allows a condition of probation of allowing people to be moved. And I've just, that one's really been eating at me because I keep thinking that it's so symbolic of how we've approached criminal justice in many cases where we just don't want the problem near us. And if we literally are moving people out of districts, that might include some parts of our state, those judicial districts are multiple counties. And does sending someone away solve the problem or does it just move it to a new place and create some challenges where they can even connect with families? And we had a lot of logistical concerns about it, along with me just having some compassion concerns about it, about how it'll impact individuals. Um, the other one um, you've probably heard a lot about this week that just passed off the House floor is House Bill 1775, which um, disallows training related to gender and racial uh, diversity. And one of the reasons that this bill deeply concerned me is our community needs to do a better job of talking about these issues. Our communities have to face these challenges. Our schools are trying to create inclusive environments and we know that we need to understand each other better. Um, I feel like issues, we know clearly that issue around, around race and sexuality, if not talked about, we don't make progress as a, as a society in terms of working together. I'm glad to talk about any of the specifics on that bill, but I think in general, um, Avoiding and denying hard topics doesn't make them go away. And our, our society needs to make progress on these areas um, and we need to, to face it head on. Um, so that's one of the reasons I oppose that bill and um, continue to do so. Um, I know this week I heard from quite a few people who just said they were feeling despair about some of the decisions being made. But I just want to say that, you know, there's also some good coming through. I was pleased with a medical parole bill that came through this week. Um, several bills that help state employees um, recover from the pandemic. Um, so we are, we are seeing some good policy and I think we just have to keep working. We know that the state is worth the work. And even when we disagree with policies being passed, um, that's not the final answer. Um, new laws, changes to those laws are being passed constantly. So just know that your voice still matters. Um, if your legislator's not listening to you, keep trying and make sure you're connecting with others to elevate your voice. So. Um, I think that's my message for the week. Maybe it's kind of a tired message, but uh, I hope you're doing well. And please drop notes or ask questions if you have them. Take care.